Hey! <laughs> well, it's Huck. And, you know, I look like a crazy person. Um, look at this hair. I mean, just look at it. Uh, you know, this is what happens when, you know, you take a shower and then you have a cowlick in the back. This is kind of always sticking up. And uh, so I had, uh, you know, something I had to uh, tend to Monday that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and so to look presentable, I put a little mousse in my hair. I happen to have some and I haven't used it in I don't know how long. But um, and then, of course, uh, you know, you sleep on it and this is what happens. Um, so I apologize for that. You also might notice this little uh, baby here. Um, that was another little event I had to do, uh, do, um, actually at the end of last week, I had to go into the dentist and I had to have what they call a deep cleaning, which is, uh, you know, not a regular cleaning, but they go deeper, you know, um, below the gum line. And, uh, I will tell you that even though they numbed me up all around with Novocaine, um... It was not a pleasant procedure at all, and it took a while. Um, I mean, I was in there for, I don't know how long it was. It seemed like about two hours. Um, at any rate, it seemed like they did every tooth like two or three times. I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, it was one of the things that was required of me was to get a clearance from a dentist <coughs> saying that I had no you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, cavities, no periodontal disease, no gum infections. Um, in other words, that my, those kind of dental issues, anything that could lead to or, um, you know, currently um, uh, manifested itself as, a, as an infection, uh, were addressed. And this had to be signed by the dentist in order to... Um, you know, advance my case toward getting onto the uh, lung transplant um, registry. Uh, so I'm doing this video today because there's a couple of things I wanted to let everyone know. And um, one is this has been a, um, this last month uh, or month and a half has been uh, probably the most uh, financially challenging uh, that I can remember in a very long time. So many, many things have happened that uh, needed to be done with. I decided about a little, I don't know, about two months ago that I had to get my mom and dad's ashes um, interred, you know, at the local cemetery here in town, which was what their, you know, final wishes, both of them were. My dad, um, you know, my dad passed away uh, you know, way back in 2007, uh, and um, I was at his bedside when he died. I was the only one there at that time. Um, my brother had been with him earlier that evening. He was in the hospice house, um, and uh, and he passed um, away. I don't know. It was probably right around 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, never forget. It was April 2nd, uh, 2007. We were um, well. I was watching. Uh, trying to watch a little bit of the um, um, national championship um, NCAA basketball game. My dad being a big Ohio State fan. Ohio State was uh, in that national championship game. That was the year they had uh, Greg Oden, if I'm not mistaken. And um, trying to think of their point guard was uh, uh, not coming to me. But um, at any rate, they ended up losing that match. Uh, I think to uh, is it uh, Florida, Miami. I I I don't remember now. Um, at any rate, um, my dad passed away. You know, sometime during the late stages of that game. And I, to be honest with you, I don't remember much of the game because of uh, just uh, you know the uh, the gravity of the situation, being with my dad and and. Um, you know, watching him uh, die. Uh, my dad died of um, uh, small cell lung cancer, and it took him quickly, uh, within seven weeks uh, from the time he found out that he had it, he was gone. Uh, and my mom died six years later, 
and uh, I've done some extensive videos of, um, you know, during that time I was um, making videos, and um, at any rate, uh, their desire was that uh, they be buried, and, um, and uh, you know, I have kept their ashes now for all these years uh, on myself, and uh, really didn't have the funds from their insurance to bury them. Uh, it cost, and, and the, the cemetery here in town, um, give me one moment, I'll be right with you. Thank you. I had to wipe my nose. I was, um, uh, I get these runny noses. Um, at any rate, uh, my mom and dad passed away. I had promised that I would try to get them, um, you know, their ashes buried. And, uh, so I had been waiting for a long time. Um, finally, um, you know, I purchased the plots. I bought, I purchased two plots. I bought one for them and, you know, one for me so that, uh, I could be beside them. Uh, when I'm gone, since I have no, you know, real family of my own. Um, and, uh, you know, otherwise I would have let my insurance kind of take care of that, I guess, uh, at the end. But uh, I'm not sure there would have been enough to do it anyway. So I'm kind of, you know, uh, at any rate. So I did that some time ago. and um, But I still held off because there was the cost of the actual burial and, and a headstone. Uh, as it was, because they had a single plot, there was a... You know, there's a size um, uh, limitation on their headstone, which um, their headstone ended up costing uh, just under $2,000 when you add all the fees and the taxes and everything. I think it was a $1,400 or $1,500, the stone itself. Um, it's not very big. Um, but, uh, and I went ahead and I put a very, very small down payment on my own headstone. Um, which will be similar to, to theirs. Um, and, um, and I guess the only requirement, uh, you know, I kind of put my headstone in layaway, if you will. And then, you know, all I have to do is pay anything on it every month, you know, $5, uh, $10, whatever. Um, so at any rate, so, um, and of course the cost of burial. Um, at this particular cemetery, um, I had to cough up about... Um, I'm trying to think of what it was. It was about $1,500 to do the two burials. Uh, I mean, that's what I had to pay. I had to pay the cemetery. Um, that was to inter them, and um, I don't know what else is involved in all of that. But um, at any rate, um, and so I had to pay that. Um, the like I said, I put. Uh, I ended up paying about $2,000 on the tombstone uh, that included all of theirs and a little bit down on mine. And um, and after I had done that, um, wouldn't you know it, I had two other big expenses that came out of the blue. One was I had to replace all my tires on my car. Now, I can't complain about my car. My car, um, I only paid $2,500 for this car, like, three and a half years ago, more than three years ago. And, um, and I've not really had to put anything into it. I, I get the oil changed every four or 5,000 miles. Um, but I've not had to replace anything. I, I, uh, but I had to do two things in the last month with my car. I had to buy all new tires and I had to get, um, I finally had to get my back brakes. Um, uh, can you imagine driving a car for three years and never having to have a brake job? Um, finally, I had to get the back brakes done. So that was about 200 and some dollars to do the brakes. They had to replace the rotors in the back. And the tires were about 600 bucks. So I had all that. Then I went to the dentist and this deep cleaning, which, by the way, this lip is still all swollen. I've got cuts on the inside and on the outside that you can see here. It's, this is after, this is, uh, you know, this is from Friday. So you can imagine how it's looked. Um, in the last few days. Um, at any rate, um, that was a little... Success. Well, at any rate, as you can see, so for someone like me, my Social Security pays me 
I guess the equivalent of about just under eight dollars an hour. If I were working a forty-hour work week, the amount of money that I make on um, Social Security disability would be, I guess, right around eight dollars an hour, just under eight dollars an hour. Um, and I have been getting financial help forever. Um, um, I have been getting financial help since, you know, really since my mom was alive, and um, and that help has actually um, increased over the years a little bit, and um, and it is what has got me to this point. Um, there's no question in my mind that without this individual's tremendous, most generous um, financial assistance. Um, I probably, I mean, and I'm not embellishing this at all. I wouldn't be alive right now. I, I certainly wouldn't be living, you know, independently here in, at home. I would have lost my house without question. I would not have been able to pay my, you know, the, the many medical um, procedures and visits and uh, just trips to the doctor. Just, uh, you know, I mean, I, on the money that I make, I can't pay all my bills. Um, let alone put gas in my car or buy, you know, my prescriptions each month. Um, so th this financial help has allowed me to do all of those things. And, you know, over time put a little bit away for things, which is why I was able to get some of this stuff done. Now, some of this stuff ended up going on, and I've been very reluctant to use them, but I have several credit cards. And... Um, if I do use them, it's usually to buy something, you know, relatively small that I could just pay out of my pocket. But in order to, um, you know, keep the cards in use so they don't take them away from me for non-use, you know, I might charge one item, you know, maybe put the gas in my car or, you know, buy a few groceries or, you know, some routine purchase. And I'll put it on the credit card and I'll pay the $28 or whatever when the when the bill comes and that way I'm using the card but I'm not getting any bill that's so big that I can't pay it off the first you know time a payment comes due and so I avoid paying interest uh, so this last month is uh, there's been twice now that I've had to use credit card where I could not pay off you know what I charged one was um, one was about a year ago, well, less than a year ago, um, when I bought the cemetery plots. Um, you can't use a credit card for that. You can't, you got to pay cash. And I didn't have, you know, enough money to pay cash for these cemetery plots. I, so I used what cash I could, and I, um, I had these 0% interest checks from one of my credit cards. And so I wrote out a check for the amount that I needed, and um, and uh, I think it was like around two thousand dollars, and um, and I cashed it at the bank, and then I took that, you know, uh, to the cemetery and, and paid for the plots. I had to do something similar for the tombstone. Um, uh, again, I didn't have the entire amount of money in the bank, so I took what I had and the, the remainder I so those are the first two times I've used a credit card for an amount that I can't just pay off when the bill comes um, I'm going to have to make payments every month and if I make them um, in a timely manner and and um, you know in the amounts high enough I'll be able to avoid you know, paying any interest um, at any rate, of course, none of that would be possible without the help I've been getting. And, um, and it's just that this is, you know, I've always tried to keep a little emergency money in the bank so that if something came up, you know, I wouldn't have to use a credit card. And, um, uh, you know, and I would uh, be covered. So this is because of all of these things back to back to back that have... Um, sprung up on me here in the last couple of months um i don't have that safety net right now and um uh so you know hopefully i will continue to 
be helped that I'll be able to maybe slowly build up a little uh, safety net again. Uh, it takes time, but um, in the meantime, the good news is that um, it looks like I am on track to be on the transplant list. They have not given me the official word that I have been approved. They were supposed to meet last week uh, to make a decision, but when it turned out that my dentist wanted to do this one more procedure before he would sign off, they delayed making their decision until after they got the form filled out by that uh, dentist, which he now has done. Like I said, I went in Friday and I had this done. Um, and um, uh, with the agreement that every three months I'm going to go back and they're going to, you know, look and see if I need another, you know, regular cleaning. Um, but he did sign off. And so they've received that at the hospital. And in my discussion with them, um, one of the um, coordinators with the program, they told me um, basically my approval is a mere formality, that the team will meet uh, sometime. I forget now whether she said uh, whether they're going to meet this Thursday or next Thursday to make their to render their final decision. At that point, assuming that it's approved, it has to be approved at the state level. There's some kind of state transplant, uh, lung transplant uh, board or team or whatever that... Um, that has to approve it. Uh, but I guess, you know, once the hospital approves it, it's generally um, just, a, um, you know, just a matter of being presented the, the names and they approve it. Um, I was told at this point they're already scheduling me for retesting. So once you're approved, all of the testing and everything that you've gone through, and I've been going through this process since last October, um, so for, you know, whatever that is, uh, eight or nine months now, I've been, you know, they've done numerous CAT scans. They've done a heart catheter. They've done a colonoscopy. They've done, I don't can't tell you how many vials of blood uh, um, they've taken. They've done uh, bone scans. They've done walking tests, pulmonary function tests, um, just everything you can imagine. And, um, and then some. Uh, but uh, now... The last time I went, which was a few weeks ago, um, they had me repeat certain tests to see if, you know, there had been any change. I had to do a six-minute walking test, which I've discussed. Uh, they did a, an abbreviated what they call a lung function test, um, and, uh, and they took some blood. Now, I'm going to have to repeat those three things uh, approximately every two months, and they've already scheduled the next one which is coming up in about three weeks, July 12th. So, I don't know exactly, um, they said about every two months, this this will be about six weeks since I just went through all of this. But, um, but it, as far as I know, those are the only things I'll be regularly scheduled to do um, for the, you know, for the time being, um, while I'm waiting to see if, um, you know, if a match shows up for me. Now, the average wait time for a, uh, for a lung transplant patient um, is somewhere between two and three years. Um, but, you know, that can, that can vary greatly. There are several people here in this area um, that have had uh, lung transplants that I've learned about one of whom I've met, and um, they didn't even wait several months, you know, uh, to be chosen. Um, and um, I'm happy to say that everybody I've heard about or learned of, uh, you know, is doing really well. So that's encouraging. Um, at any rate, uh, right now, uh, I set up some time ago probably, well, I can't remember exactly when, but uh, kind of early on in this process of um, seeking a, you know, a lung transplant evaluation, I set up um, a GoFundMe page. Now, I, one time I had a GoFundMe page, and I kind of, um, it was very helpful at the time, and um, got a significant amount of help 
been through a very difficult period of time and um and um and since that time that site has kind of been uh a, a, you know it served its purpose for for its time and i uh um quit using it and uh and so uh i've actually lost the link to it i mean i i don't know how to access it anymore i, I lost the password or whatever and i suppose there's probably a way to to start it up again but rather than to do that i started a new gofundme page specifically for you know this lung transplant um to help me cover some of the enormous costs that this procedure would i'm told incur now i've also been told you know that i shouldn't worry if i don't have the money uh you know but uh not being a person that wants to incur a lot of debts or put my house at risk or whatever. I don't want to, you know, go on Medicaid or, or some crazy thing. Um, I was kind of told um, the Cleveland Clinic, for instance, suggests that you should have about $15,000 in the bank, um, you know, prior to undergoing this procedure. Well, I don't have, uh, I don't have $1,500 in the bank, let alone $15,000 in the bank. Um, so that's, you know, um, one transplant patient that I do know, and um, in fact, we're going to sit down and have a discussion here probably in the next week or two. Uh, and she's going to help. Um, anyway, she's from here in town. She's very good friends with my um, neighbor. Um, and so I have, you know, seen her from time to time. Her name is Lori. She had a double lung transplant, which is what I would have to get. Um, about a year and a half ago now it's been about a year and a half and she's doing extremely well she had hers done in Pittsburgh and I am told her friend next door tells me that uh, she takes like 30 plus pills a day 35 I think she said medications per day and I have read that you know you have to take a number of medications and it's a balance between suppressing your immune system so that your your body's own defense mechanisms um, don't attack your new organ which they see as you know foreign and, and uh, you know some kind of a um, danger to your body um, so you have to suppress your immune system with certain drugs and there's a variety of drugs that they use and you know they more or less have to experiment for the first six months to a year, it's uh, it's trial and error. Uh, um, they're giving you drugs to suppress your immune system while they're trying to keep your body at least, um, your immunity at least um, uh, strong enough to, to ward off, you know, the common everyday germs. That, in other words, they don't want you dying of, you know, just the normal bacteria that you're going to come into contact with every day um and so uh the first few months particularly is critical um that they get this balance right and they find that balance by experimenting with different medications and uh hopefully there are so many hundreds or even thousands of people now annually who are getting these transplants that they've you know they've got more knowledge to go by more experience to go by so they, they tend to get these um uh, while it still takes trial and error um you know they tend to eventually get it right and um in the meantime you know you're gonna have points in time when you're you know where they don't have the balance right and your body is going to be rejecting the organ um so you have to go to the hospital basically twice a week um, to be tested. They check and they look for signs of infection uh, or they look for signs of rejection. And um, either way, it means that there's got to be a, uh, first of all, they got to treat the problem. Um, and secondly, then they've got to make adjustments to your medication. Anyway, the, the bottom line is that um, you've got to take these medications for the rest of your life. You're also going to have to be checking in at the hospital periodically for the rest of your life. At first, it's like two, two or even three times a week. Um, that will, you know, taper off to 
maybe once a month uh, to eventually maybe even, you know, uh, once every two months or, or so, if you're fortunate enough, um, you know, to get through that one year, three year, five year window. Um, so the cost of all of this can be enormous. And um, the medications alone, there are people that are facing, you know, as much as uh, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a month just in just in pharmaceutical costs, you know, just just for their prescription drugs. Um, uh, so in addition to that, you know, there are certain things that your insurance gives you a copay or a, or a deductible. And with all of these frequent trips to the hospital, um, not to mention the, the, you know, the three week stay or longer, you know, initially for the procedure itself, the bills can really add up. And, um, so for that purpose, I have set up this GoFundMe page, but I've never publicized it. Um, in fact, there's only one person I've ever really given that link to, and that's because they specifically asked for a way in which to um, help me, and um, and that was you know that was there, so that's what I did. Um, but I'm about to announce. I'm waiting for the official word uh, because I didn't feel it was fair to put that out there and ask for people to you know to help me with the cost of this if I wasn't in fact going to have this procedure done. So, um, you know, once they give me the official word that I've been approved, you know, both at the local level and the state level, at that point, I'm going to do a video and I'm going to announce, you know, the link and I'm going to publicize it, you know, among my, you know, locally here and uh, see if, uh, you know, people that I know might, might be able to help me, um, family and friends and stuff. So, Anyway, I just wanted to let you all know that's kind of where everything stands right now. I probably should let you go now so I can go address, uh, you know, this nightmare of a hair situation. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to get that all out there and, um, and let you know, you know, where I stand. Because I've been talking about a lot of these things for some time. And... Um, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, I had been, you know, kind of on um, pins and needles uh, for some time now, trying to figure out what my status was and, you know, where I stood after all of this. And um, so right now I'm encouraged that uh, that it looks like I'm going to be approved for, th for this. And uh, it took me a long time to put, you know, to wrap my head around whether or not this was something I wanted to do for a lot of reasons. Um, and, um, uh, you know, there was an opportunity a couple of years ago I had to go through this with the Cleveland Clinic, and I elected at the time not to, to go through with it. Um, they had scheduled a weekend for me to come up there and, and, you know, go through some of this evaluation process. And, um, and like I said, at the time, functioning a lot better than I am now and I I elected for a number of reasons not to not to pursue it at that time um, but things changed and um, my health deteriorated and um, and uh, like I said after weighing a lot of the pros and cons I decided that uh, you know that I would go through with this and um, and that's a video that I want to do as well and so uh, in the coming weeks, I'll probably um, go into that a little bit of what kind of went into my decision making um, on the side of pursuing this because there's a lot to consider, not the least of which is, you know, am I am I worthy? Uh, there are other people younger than me that maybe offer, you know, uh, in other words, I don't want to take somebody else's, you know, spot. So. Uh, like I said, there were a lot of considerations that went into, you know, this kind of a decision. And, um, and a lot of it, you know, still weighs on me. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've come this far and, uh, and I'm happy, uh, where we're at at this point. So anyway, I will be discussing that at, you know, in more depth in the future. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. 
Um, I want to thank you again for um, those of you who have helped me, um, those of you who have just, uh, you know, wished me well. Um, I appreciate the positive um, energy. Thank you. And I'll see you again real soon.